Good morning, everybody. Welcome back to the Opportunistic Trader. It's just after 10 a.m. on October 22nd, and uh, we're joined by uh, Phil Flynn of the Price Futures Group and uh, Fox Business Contributor. How's it going, Phil? Good morning. I'm doing great. How are you this morning? Good, good. Good start to the week. Uh, you know, markets yeah. uh, initially opened down in Asia, then had a nice rally. We we're up about 11 in the S&P. Now we're down six. Uh, crude has been trading weak. You know, right now we're down 60 cents at 68.70. Uh, what are your thoughts? What's going on in the world? You know, I, I think uh, the markets lack in any conviction. You know, part of it is, you know, we have the midterm elections right around the corner. Um, and you've got the uh, two sides of the Chinese economy. You know, on one hand, you got concerns that China uh, is slowing uh, because of the trade war. But then you look at their oil demand, it actually surged to near a record high. And you've got the Chinese government talking about more stimulus to the economy. So we're getting a lot of mixed signals on the market right now. It's creating a lot of confusion. And, um, and, and I think that's where we're seeing this incredible uh, volatility here uh, in the world. Uh, we talk about oil specifically here for one minute. Uh, the selling today, you know, I'm not surprised. The technical setup looks a little weak to retest the lows. And it's not unusual uh, for the market to have a, a weak start on a day when we go into contract expiration, which is happening on the November contract today. So I think the weakness in that market's being exasperated by that. Uh, we did have some breaking news on um, uh, a report from Genscape, uh, the private oil forecasters. Um, the report came out and showed a change from Friday that in Cushing, Oklahoma, supplies rose uh, from Friday, October 12th for the entire week. So uh, last week rose 1 million. 0 0.080 million barrels. So that was kind of bearish. Though from Tuesday, October 16th, the increase wasn't nearly as much. Uh, that They showed an increase of 149,468 barrels. So we got a little bit of a bounce off the lows off of that number. Um, but with the Dow, you know, starting to go back down, now down 100 on the day, Oil's going to have a tougher time rallying here on those concerns. Um, and and we also know that a lot of hedge funds dumped their positions last week, which is kind of interesting. We just got a report uh, last week. Which uh, report's that? Um, that comes from the commitment of traders last week. And if you look at the, the hedge funds, um, they have been getting out, uh, getting out of the oil market. Um, in fact, here is a report from John Kemp, my buddy. Um, he said that hedge fund managers accelerated their profit taking in crude and refined fuels last week. As confidence in the price rally faltered and the market fell, hedge funds and other money, money managers combined uh, their net long position um, by, they cut it by over 133 million barrels last week in all the markets. Now, when the hedge funds Let's see, they, their combined total by 187 millions after earlier rising it by 196 million barrels. You know, but sometimes the hedge funds getting out isn't necessarily a bad thing. You know, sometimes uh, when they start dumping, it's the time you want to buy. In fact, actually, you know, over the last couple of years, the hedge funds have been a good, you know, reversal indicator. You know, when the hedge funds go one way, you want to go the other way. Yeah, absolutely. You know, they have it to, you know, so this might be an indicator that we're close to the bottom. You know, seasonally, we still have, you know, the rest of October to get through because it's a weak time, uh, a weak period in demand for the refinery run. So we still have to get through that. But I think we're getting a false sense of security as to how well uh, we're going to be able to make up for lost production uh, from, you know, Iran, Venezuela, Libya, uh, and some of the other problem areas. In fact, there was a special report by Reuters that they put out about OPEC production. And it was an internal document that basically said that the OPEC countries are basically having a hard time maintaining production levels where they're at. 
you know, and everybody says, well, you know, as soon as the prices go up, OPEC's going to start cheating. This is the best they've got. This is it, guys. <laughs> you know, now the Saudis say they can raise production uh, by a little bit more. In fact, there was a really good interview uh, with uh, Khalid al Fali this weekend uh, in TAS, if you get a chance to take a look at that. Um, but basically acknowledging that, hey, yeah, we have more spare production capacity. Um, you know, we're producing over 10 million barrels a day. You know, we, we can raise it to 12 million barrels a day. But then that's pretty much it, you know, when it comes to global spare production capacity. So you put that all into the context uh, of where we're at right now. Um, the basically spare production capacity is at a historic low right now, going into a very uncertain geopolitical time. And so we think there's still significant risks of, of shortnesses and, and tightness. Um, now, I know everybody's looking at the price of oil saying, oh, my gosh, $68 a barrel. It's terrible. Oh, my gosh. You know, the economy's slowing, all that kind of stuff. Well, listen, oil demand always slows in October. I'm sorry, guys. <laughs> Get out of the program. And if you look at what we saw in China and the other places, demand's still going to be strong. So going into winter, we're going to be tight, and, and we should resume the rally. I had a question just quickly. Um, one is... Do you think that this was affected uh, a little bit by the Saudi situation and the Saudi news people thinking, like, I know uh, a couple of Sunday nights, not this Sunday night, but the Sunday before when all of this stuff started really coming out, I thought crude would have been up a couple of bucks. You mm -hmm. know, the fact that he was not alive, missing, and who knows what was going to happen, that people might have positioned too long for something like that and then uh you know may have uh sold out and exacerbated the down move you know because yeah the, that's possible i mean whenever you get these headlines like that it, it's hard to judge you know whether it's going to be bullish or bearish it really is i mean on the headline you would think oh my gosh you're going to come down hard on saudi arabia they're going to put on sanctions the saudis are going to get mad and they're going to cut production uh, to raise prices which could happen but that's a process it's not going to happen overnight i think in the short term uh, because they want to keep the relationship with donald trump as close as they can right now uh, because he doesn't have very many friends in the world right now that is, you know, trying to give him the benefit of the doubt. Um, uh, you know, I think the Saudis are going to try to do whatever they can to keep production high, uh, to try to, you know, placate, you know, President Trump and Steve Mnuchin, who both, both went on record and said that the relationship with Saudi Arabia is still very important. Um, but the pressure coming supposedly there's going to be another tape by the turkish government they're calling it the naked tape i don't know what that means but basically, <laughs> that sounds a little scary uh, it sounds a little scary right yeah uh, <laughs> where they're going to supposedly release the tape of the actual murder that would probably dispel um all of the uh, different stories that saudi arabia has given from you know rogue actors to um you know to whatever other you know you know, Martians came in and took this guy, you know, they've had every excuse in the book. Um, and it's very possible that if this tape is as bad as some say it might be, the political pressure to make Saudi Arabia pay a price might be overwhelming. Um, and look at the timing of this, you know, everybody, you know, all we were talking about was the Iranian sanctions a few, few months ago. Um, and those sanctions right now are, are going to be in place here very, very shortly. And we're going to see a significant amount of oil off of the market. And I know right now everybody is kind of like, oh, you know, supplies have been rising. Everything's OK. Short term, that's true. I think a couple of weeks from now, a couple months from now, we're going to see those supplies tightening. That doesn't mean we couldn't see another play to the downside, you know, technically, you know, if the stock market keeps getting beat up, that they're going to have problems. Uh, but then it's going to come down to the barrels. And uh, we just don't think the barrels are going to be there. Uh, we think once November hits, instead of seeing increases in supplies, we're going to see draws in supplies in the U.S., draw after draw after draw after draw, similar to what we saw when we saw inventories draw down. Um, and I think once we start seeing that kick in, and we will, 
um, I think the mood will change for the longer term picture. Yeah, I I actually uh, I'm a little constructive on oil at these levels for trade. My time horizon is significantly different, I think, than you know what you guys are looking at. But uh, you know, I think potentially there could be a you know a decent bounce. The the commodity you know in November traded up to seventy seven dollars. So right. Um, you know, it's almost ten ten dollars, which is close to twelve thirteen percent. Um, yeah. you know, it's a, well, which that's is a pretty actually kind of interesting. Ten dollar break. If you go back to the corrections we've had, we had one in Memorial Day, you know, Fourth of July, and and they they were about ten dollars roughly. And right. so you're right. So maybe from a dollar a, viewpoint and percentage viewpoint, historically, this is where you want to buy, not sell. Yeah, it's a pretty big move. And then my other question to you um, is, you know, I know you were looking at like selling up at 77 and you thought, you know, it would hold in in the lower 70s. Does this particular move change your year end, you know, price on oil? And what do you think, uh, you know, oil is going to? I know I'm pinning you down. I apologize. What do you no, think no, oil is? Uh, what I'm here for. You know, <laughs> where do you think oil is going to finish the year? You know, I, I still think 84 is our target, and um, um, and um, I, I don't think this correction has changed us. And it kind of reminds me of a year ago, um, kind of the same time of year. You know, we had a big correction in oil and. You know, people were saying, Phil, your target's still 65. And I go, yeah, I'm sticking to it because, you know, that's what my long-term charts are saying. That's what I think the fundamentals are pointing towards. Um, and it did take a while. We struggled a little bit. But if you remember, you know, I, I got in in the bottom of the ninth inning, right? We hit 65. I think it was like December, you know, where we saw that big rally uh, in the price of crude, Um and uh, we were able to knock off that $85 a barrel. Um, and, and, and it's kind of funny how the mood has shifted. You know, I mean, when we were up at 75 a couple of weeks ago, everybody said, Phil, you know, your 84 is probably too low. Don't you want to go up to 100? <laughs> you know, I mean, these other guys are going to 100. At least go up to 85. They, you know, and it's like, no, I want to stick to my 84. We'll probably have a bit of a correction or consolidation period. And now that we've had the little extra to the downside, you know, um, you know, people are saying, oh, don't you want to go lower? Other people are too. And I'm like, no, I think we're going to stick to it. And, and this is, is, you know, you do overshoot. We did think the low seventies were going to hold. Uh, we got a few extra dollars because I believe the stock market shook them off. But the thing that you got to remember when you have these price drops in oil, what we've seen over the past, it's, it's increased demand every time. When we've had a $10 break, everybody thinks oil's cheap. They start buying it again. And then, you know, the prices start to go up. And if you're in a tight market and you know the market's going to be tight, um, you're going to be using this opportunity to lock in these prices. So, no, I agree with you, Larry. I think we stick to our 84. Okay. Well, I appreciate that uh, that thought. Um, yeah. Are there any other markets that you're looking at that piqued your yeah. interest? The softs have been exciting. Cotton, we're finally starting to make some headway on the upside of on cotton. And so that's uh, looking pretty darn good. Um, and so that, uh, you know, the softs in general, I thought looked pretty good. So where's my sheet today I had? Here we go. Uh, some of the markets that I thought on the softs looked good to the upside. Cotton was one I think we mentioned last week. Um, cocoa is another one that uh, we've liked. So I think some of the soft markets are looking pretty good. Coffee looks like it's turned the corner. So the softs and, and sugar, of course, has been on a freaking tear, but it's getting a little bit overbought. Um, so those are the ones that we like right now. We, we think they look pretty good. Um, you know, as far as the stock market, you know, we're still uh, pretty bullish going into the end of the year. Um, you know, I can give you our trade levels today. We're looking, uh, we were looking to go long at 2742.75 was our ultra buy number on the S&P. Our ultra star sell number is 2789. And we we're almost up to the 2789 earlier, but we backed off here a little bit. Yeah. So, you know, I, th I think we're kind of in a, you know, in a little bit of a trading range with an upward bias in stocks. And, you know, we think, you know, some of the, uh, 
waves of fear that we've seen are, are going to level off over over time. Interesting. Yeah, I, I'm I'm actually thinking, uh, you know, I don't know if it's going to be today or whatever, but I think uh, we're going to enter on the equity side some type of correction zone. I, I think today's action looks you know, again, they can turn this on a dime, so I'm looking just short term, but it looks, it doesn't look good, especially when you had China up 4% mm -hmm. last night and all markets in the world. It's a right. weird, it's a weird day. It's another divergence day. You have the Dow down like 140 and right. you have the NASDAQ up, you know, NASDAQ futures are positive. So I don't know what to make of it, but, uh, it, you know, again, we could rally 20 handles in two seconds. I'm not saying that, but uh, it just feels a little weird here. But, you know, as a trader, you know, coming down off of the 82 high, I mean, you know, we're testing last night's low again. So, you know, we'll look at these levels. But, um, you know, I think uh, it'll be an interesting uh, pre-election market. Got it. I agree. I would agree. I agree. Okay, got it. Any other um, thoughts? No. Uh, you know, I mean, you know, I mean, there are a lot of people that are looking for a big sell off here. You might get it. Um, you know, it's 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 eerily quiet right now. You know, I'm not feeling and the reason why you might be right is because I don't think there's a lot of conviction behind the moves here. Um, and uh, but I will say this, you know, we were coming into October and, and people were looking for that Black Monday, you know. Um, um, well, it's definitely so, been a volatile start to the month here, and I'm even yeah. just looking at the uh, charts for the day, and it's a little bit of a reversal of what we've seen so far month to date, where like China's been up in the China ETFs, you know, China actually had its largest update in two and a half years, uh, but mm -hmm. financials are underperforming right now in the U.S. Emerging markets are still, so EEM's up over a percent right now, and that's broadly from that China thing. So, uh, you know, we'll keep a close eye on small caps, how they're reacting and uh, energy markets as well. All right. Good, good, good. No, I agree with you. It's kind of crazy day. We'll see how it all shakes out at the end of the day. Yeah. Yes, sir. All right. All right. Thanks, all right. Guys. Hey, thanks, guys. Have all a good right. one. Thanks. Price, Take care, Phil. Bye -bye. Price Futures Group and Fox Business Contributor.